you must promise me that there's not going to be any drama. I promise. I promise. Look at me in my eyes and promise. I promise no drama, Alexandria. Hey, welcome to your weekly ticket. Well, it looks like Michael Keaton is returning to play Batman. Keaton, who famously starred as the Cape Crusader in the Tim Burton-directed Batman movies, is in talks to return to the role for the Warner Brothers DC film. Ezra Miller will star as Barry Allen, aka The Flash, and the project will be directed by IT filmmaker Andy Muschietti. The movie is described as a loose adaptation of Jeff Johns and Andy Kubert's Flashpoint comic book storyline. The Flash will reportedly follow Ezra Miller's Barry Allen as he travels back in time to prevent his mother's death only to inadvertently create an alternate timeline where, in the present day, Keaton's Batman has been guarding Gotham City for the past 30 years. I can't commit to anything that long. Good job, Batman. Also, Christina Hodson, who will be writing the script for The Flash, will be re-teaming up with Margot Robbie for an all-new Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Robbie is set to star, and Hodson will pen the new female-led screenplay for Disney. The film is said to be an original story with new characters that is inspired by the long-running attraction at Disney Parks. This project is separate from the already announced franchise reboot being developed by Pirate scribe Ted Elliott and Chernobyl creator Craig Mazin. And Matthew A. Cherry will direct an original comedy for Warner Brothers titled The Come Up. The film will be written by Emmy-nominated writer from When They See Us, Michael Starbury, and is described as Friday meets Ocean's Eleven. The original idea comes from actor and comedian Jermaine Fowler, who will star and also serve as an executive producer. Lil Rel Howery, Keith Lucas, and Kenneth Lucas are all set to star in the film. And if you're looking for suggestions for what to watch this week, we'll look no further because we have Collider's own Perry Nemiroff with a suggestion for us. What do you got? Oh, I was so excited to bring this one up because I would recommend this for a multitude of reasons. I've got a feeling a lot of people out there have seen Sean Baker's movie, The Fro Florida Project. But the one that I really want to recommend right now is Tangerine because... I just really think that's a game changing film in so many different ways. So in case you need a little background on this one, movie takes place Christmas Eve in Los Angeles, and it focuses on two transgender women, Cindy and Alexandra. And it begins with Cindy just getting out of jail and Alexandra kind of accidentally slipping and revealing that Cindy's pimp boyfriend has been sleeping with someone else. So much of the movie focuses on Cindy's kind of relentless determination to run around the city and find this woman. And Katana Kiki Rodriguez and Maya Taylor are just, they are electric in these roles. And so much of Tangerine has this kind of, this madcap romp kind of feel to it, but it's also a really sweet story of friendship. And I feel like it's their performances that let a movie like this have that kind of effective sincerity to it. And I also have to throw in why this movie made a lot of headlines when it first came out. And it's the fact that it was shot entirely on a modified iPhone. And I know that can sound like a real cheesy gimmick, but I can assure you it's not. And I found that it was a technical choice that really added more intimacy to the film and just brings you closer to the character. So Tangerine, a must watch, a fantastic film, and also a fantastic film that has brought more visibility and still brings more visibility to the transgender community. So. Seriously, get on this one. Cannot recommend it enough. Outstanding. Kale. Yeah, yes. no, I've been absolutely looking ex for something <laughs> exactly like that to watch. So that's a great suggestion. Also cool that there's like a technical aspect oh my to God. it. So endlessly fascinated by that. Kind of awesome. I hear yeah. you have a recommendation for me too. I, what is I it? I do. I do. You've probably seen it. Some people haven't. I waited way too long. Um, upgrade. If you haven't seen Upgrade, Upgrade is bananas. It took me forever to see it. I wanted to watch it before Invisible Man, and I did because it's the same director, Lee Wynell. It's about a man who gets paralyzed from a mugging and then gets installed with a uh, computer system called STEM. He's able to walk again, but also he has supernatural abilities. He can fight like crazy. Um, if you like John Wick or you like Black Mirror, and or, or you like both, you're gonna love this. It's crazy. Uh, I didn't know what to expect because I didn't want to watch any trailers. 
Um, and yeah, no, it's it's madness. I love it. And I, I wish everyone that likes any sort of action movie would see it. It's filmed normal. It doesn't, it's not filmed on an iPhone. <laughs> well, you do know that the really cool technical thing that Lee Winnell is coming to be very well known for now is the motion control camera. That's part of the reason why his action sequences are stand out. You see an invisible man and you see it all over the place and upgrade. And I feel like that's just one of the many reasons why he's going to wind up being one of the great genre directors we have. Oh, absolutely. When they mentioned that there, he might be in charge of the like monster cinematic universe for Universal, I'm like, Yo, oh, yeah, just give it to him. Just like let him do whatever he wants. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, and Lee's going to run with it too because I believe news dropped that they're turning Upgrade into a TV series. So get ready for more of that. That's, oh my God. Thank you. I forgot. I was going to mention that. Yes, it's it's also going to become a television series. So yeah, I can't, I can't wait for that. Thank you so much for joining us, Perry. Make sure to check out exactly. Collider as well. Thank you. Available to watch at home on Friday, John Lewis, Good Trouble. You see something that is not right? Not fair, yeah. not just, yeah. say something, yeah. do something, get in trouble, good trouble, necessary trouble. Using present day interviews with Lewis, now 80 years old, Porter explores his childhood experiences, his inspiring family, and his fateful meeting with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in 1957. And also available to watch at home on Friday, The Outpost. Do you remember what happened? When? During the battle. A team of U.S. soldiers stationed at the deadliest outpost in Afghanistan are relentlessly attacked by an overwhelming force of Taliban insurgents. Their fight for survival is the ultimate display of American valor. The film, which is based on true events, was directed by Rod Lurie and stars Orlando Bloom, Scott Eastwood, and Milo Gibson. All right, everyone. Well, that's it for today. Leave us a comment and let us know if you'll be seeing The Outpost or John Lewis Good Trouble. I'm Kale Anonymous, and I'll see you next time.